everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to Loughborough University for today's NBL Division 1 clash, a vital one as we enter the business side of the Division 1 season between the hometown Loughborough Riders and the visiting Essex Rebels, John Hobbs and Jason Swain here. And it's going to be an interesting battle here today, isn't it, Jason? You know, Essex at the moment one of the closest contenders to the Derby Trailblazers, top of the table against a Loughborough team that are in sixth place and are trying to keep a playoff spot alive for the postseason. Yeah, and I know we have a full day of competition, really. We have the kicking final coming up, and all eyes will be on that one, but this is a just as much as a must win. In sixth place, Loughborough need to really cement that playoff spot, and at second, Essex, like you just said, only the head-to-head -head separates them and Derby and Hemel, so all to play for, John, in, in both of these games and this one coming up especially. Absolutely. Uh, two teams making their way on to the floor. We'll give you the um, team sheets, starting with the visiting Essex Rebels, and a very you know, good team led by people like Luke Bazumbru, Trey Chapman, Connor Nelson, a very strong lineup there. Yeah, and coach Ross, no Ross Norfolk, he he's kept some of the core players from last season and he just added that talent and Luke Bisumbru, you know, he's good, he plays downhill all the time and he just amplifies what this team is about. You know, they're always in attack mode, they play loose and they're, they're a deadly team from all different positions, John. Absolutely, and Loughborough just very quickly, obviously led by Elijah Bailey, 20 points a game. What a force he has been this season. Yeah, he has and he's just kept them ticking over. I mean, they've got various guys that can play you know, you see on screen now Conroy Hayden who's, you know, presence in the middle, but, but he's been the one that's just kept this, this ship going in the right direction. Well, we are underway here at Loughborough University and Loughborough gets the first possession of this game. Hayden to Onya inside here is Headley. Headley off the glass, no good. Chapman with the rebound, and away comes Bazumru for the Rebels. And like we said, Bazumru just pushing it right back at him, and there's an open three, but Bazumru will attack from the get-go, and he'll, and he'll keep doing that, John, all game. Abuka Ekwe with the miss there from the top for Essex. Here that, is Gordon. That'll be interesting, John, to see then put Victor O'Leary in, in screen and roll. Victor O'Leary, you know, borderline arrogant, can score at the other end, but can they make him play some defence for the entirety? First points of the game there to Justin Headley. As Essex, who need a win to keep the pressure on the league-leading Derby Trailblazers at the top of the MB1, NBL1 table, as Trey Chapman with his first score of the game. So first score and first rebound to Trey Chapman and he started off well in this first minute and change. Good start from the big fella. Pull up jumper. Thought about it but rolled out as Bazumru collects the rebound and here is Luke Bazumru, a wide open Victor Ollering off the back iron for his three. And here is Elijah Bailey for the riders. As Hadley drives, kicks it out and the Jumper is no good from Hayden. I mean, that's not his shot, John, in the open court. He's usually a ball screen and roll to the bucket player. But going back to Victor Olareri's miss, some players you like that miss early. He's one of those guys because if he scores, he tends to keep the ball a lot. He, he'll be more selective and how he scores going forward now. So not a bad thing for Essex that he missed his open jumper. Absolutely is. Essex has said looking to keep the pressure on Derby. They're six and one on the road this season. Their only defeat came at Derby as the score there inside from Chapman. But going back to Victor O'Leary, if he would have made that first one, he would have shot that next one. He's patient on offense, gets it to Chapman, and they end up with an easy score. Actually, the score is from Conor Nelson. My apologies. As the steal there from Olerin as a fight for it right by the Loughborough bench and Essex will get the ball 7.23 remaining in the first both teams just feeling each other around a little bit here yeah and, and as can be expected you know you would like the the big players like the Sumbro on the ball to step up down the stretch 
But right now, it's about just getting people going, both offensively and defensively. And what a pass there. That's a great pass, and Bazumru with the finish. Luke Bazumru, of course, spent last season with the Surrey Scorchers in the British Basketball League after a successful spell with the Solar Kestrels, where he went, won every trophy in the National League as inside it goes to Ekwe who misses the layup and here is Gordon driving Naduku putting the moves going inside blocks but a foul has been called Colin Nelson thought he got mo most of the ball but the referee says otherwise and Victor Naduku will go to the line but for me there, the issue with, with Nelson is not that he picked up the foul, John. You're running out a, a non-shooter. You know, and Nuku put the ball on the floor. He was tested with an open 15-footer. Didn't really want to take it. And then he got beat to the bucket and ended up committing the foul. So you've got to know your personnel and who you're running at and who you're not. And, you know, bad bad sign early that Connor Nelson picks up that foul. Victor Nuku, who joined the Riders in 2019. Originally, actually, from uh, Lancashire, not too far away from you there, Jason. Don't, don't say that, John. <laughs> don't say that. And the battle begins. <laughs> Originally from Wigan. Not me. Ex-Manchester ex Magic uh, player is Victor Natuku, <laughs> but uh, now making the East Midlands his home, here is Chapman for the Rebels. And it's e evident that Chapman is involved in everything, John, at the top of the key. He's so pivotal in how their offence runs. Bazumbru driving at Gordon, going inside, and it's too strong. The rebound by Hayden, and away come the riders. Essex leading by a point thus far. Gordon driving with no fear, and a foul called as he was going for the rebound. And that'll be Milo Gordon's first foul of the day. Going back to Trey Chapman. Trey Chapman played at Hawaii Pacific Sharks. University. Can you do you know anyone else that played there, John? And well, there's your knowledge. There will be a player that will be uh, on the floor tonight. That's a certain Ronald Blaine, if I'm not mistaken. As Bazumbru off is. with his two. There is, but we can go even <laughs> further back and talk about BBL legend. Oh, Craig! Now you're and really he, getting he, to me. He now. was a shark <laughs> in the BBL. Uh, you know, I'll leave it out there for a. Uh, we'll for get the there fans later. Watching. Yeah. There's Naduku, a 46% three-point shooter for the season. This is his first three of the day. Here is Ekwe, excuse me, who is fouled. That will not count. But a smart play by Ekwe as he kind of bullied his way to the rim, saw the mismatch and twisted the hips and went inside and just finger roll with the left hand. Nice play by Ekwe. Milo Gordon coming out and Joe... Bilak coming into the game for the first time today. Great pass. Nice pass inside, and Chapman, the recipient, finishes it off. This is a well-oiled machine in Essex. No wonder they sit second in this Division One. Hayden drives. Bailey with the mid-range jumper is no good. Gets the loose ball, goes inside, again misses. And Olleren now to the races for the Rebels in his favorite place in transition, but misses the floater. Hayden collects the loose change, and Loughborough can breathe a sigh of relief in a low scoring game, it must be said thus far, but it's been very physical from both teams, as Justin Headley has it. Here is Naduku again for three, that's short. And Ekwe with the rebound, and bad, here comes Bazumbru. Bad news in the open court there, Absolutely. Bad news. You've got you know, Victor Olleren and Luke Bazumbru, two players who love to play in transition, love the fast pace. And Luke Bazumbru will go to the foul line. Last time these two teams met, actually, back in uh, Essex, Luke Bazumbru had eight points, eight rebounds, five assists, but struggled from the foul line as he misses his first. He was one for six from the stripe, and he's missed his first free throw in this game. But as you say, ex-Solent player who Solent was so dominant in those days he was there. And I would argue, you know, Malcolm Smith was the probably the focal point in terms of MVP. But Luke Pasumbru, I would say, was probably your most important player. You know, he, he was always playing guard, playing forward, whatever it took for them to win. 
he was able to get that done. And from one excellent player, Luke Mazumbru checks out, and another excellent player, Elias Porman, the number six, comes in for the Rebels. Played a huge part last season for the Kestrels in getting to the playoffs as inside. And the finish from Bailey. Wow, somebody jumped 20 points a game for Elijah Bailey, and that one will be the highlight of today as he got up there and posterized the defense. What a play by Elijah Bailey. Already a screensaver has been posted on Loughborough University's laptops all across the campus as Essex, who still lead by two, with a turnover at the other end. So Loughborough with a chance to tie. And here is the man of the moment, Bailey. Inside, beautiful pass. And that was a late whistle, but a foul call nonetheless. Sam Keita was going for the finish. We're seeing some excellent ball screen and roll early on from both teams. We've seen pass after pass going right down the middle. The weak side defense for me needs to be a lot better. Guys are hugging their men on defense on the weak side. They need to get off and help. But have we seen some good passing already, John? Well, as we now head with 4.05 remaining in the first, Essex up by two, but Sam Keita with a chance to tie things, and he misses the first, so Essex will keep their lead just a little bit longer. Yeah, poor shooting from the foul line from both teams, but that's why, because the importance of this game, six plays second and all to play for, so you can see a little bit of tightness in the shoulders by both teams. Well, we're coming up to the business end of the uh, the season. Most teams with five games left to play in the league as Equay has it, spins on Bailey and kicks it out. Horman, an underrated three-point shooter, shows his prowess from the wing. But you know he can score, even back in his ABL days. You know, you know he can fill it up. He was always top five in scoring in that division as a junior. So once you get that feeling, it's never going to go away as he strokes a three ball. Nice play by Elias Bowman. Averaging seven points, six boards, four assists. Solid stats, mainly off the bench. As Bilak for three, answers at the other end. <laughs> he didn't look like he was going to make it, John. He like lent away like that one's off, but... His, nice feet, his feet didn't look set very well either, but hey, they all count. Yeah, who cares? 12 to 10, Essex still in control. Here is Porman. Ekwe drives at Bailey, the spin, kicks it out to Chapman. Chapman at the elbow, in and out. And that ball will trickle out of bounds, and Loughborough will get the ball. Ekwe and Chapman are two sound players. Um, able to come to two foot and stops, make short jumpers, just seem to make everyone better on this team. Two really, really good players for Essex. 2.57 remaining in the first, and what well, has been a physical encounter as Headley goes inside, beautiful Euro step, and gets his own miss and scores. What a nice move it was. Game is tied at 12, 2.40 remaining in the first. Poorman driving. Oh, nice, pass nice pass inside, and Chapman with the emphatic finish. And that will be an Essex ball. Miscommunication there between Headley and Keita. And Essex will get another bite of the cherry. We often talk about guys being ready on the bench, John, and when you come in, the reason you're coming in is to change the ball game, and Elias Bowman has made a couple of great plays. There he is again, again yeah. with the near assist and the rebound, and it's just what you want as a coach for guys coming off the bench. Keita nearly travelled with it. Here is Bailey, looks to step back. Good defence from Ollerin, who's a good defender. Keita drives inside over Winter, who's into the game for the first time, and Keita, at the second attempt, makes it count. Too easy, John. Winter has the advantage of being quicker. Has to stay in front and contain Keita before he turns the corner. And here is Ben Winter on the ball. A lot of time on the shot clock. Here is Porman. Porman dancing, floating off the glass. Too strong. Chapman with the rebound, and the ball will go out of bounds. Essex will keep it with 149 remaining in the first. I like how Victor Lerere is playing early on. He's not forcing the jumper, he's spreading the wealth, kind of synchronizing his team, John, and he's playing unselfish basketball. I doubt we'll say that for the whole of the game because he can flat out score. Well, but was... right now, 
he's sharing the ball and you love to see it. There was three seconds on the shot clock, which Essex used up all of them, so shot clock violation, and here come Loughborough with 1.40 remaining here in the first. And a good bit of defense there from Pullman and a bit too much from Victor Ollerin. Oh, actually it was from Elias Pullman coming in from behind. And that's a first foul on Pullman off the bench as Trey Chapman checks out and Rory Winter now in his fifth season with the Essex Rebels comes in. Averaged 16 points a game in his first season leading Essex from Division 2 to Division 1 and has stayed here ever since as Keita has the ball. Keita marked heavily by two Essex players, still got his shot to go. And a ref referee has just blown the whistle. Looks like Keita's a little bit frustrated. He's had a yeah. put, he's had a put back and gone to the line, but this one, you have to make those, you know, left-handed layup. It's the old mic and drill coming into play. You've got to be able to make those. There's hardly anybody guarding you, I'm sure. He would love that one back. Well, at the same time, when he collected the ball, he had two Essex players on him, Kyron Martin and uh, Elias Pormann. Still had a great degree of difficulty to get that reverse layup to go. You're being too nice, John. Maybe I am. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. Big, it's early in the day. <laughs> yeah, it is. Big, big game. He has to make that with his left hand. He won't need telling. He's an excellent player. Last year playing for Plymouth. Yeah. You know, he knows, he knows the big occasion. First season here at Loughborough. Winter. Pullman. Eight on the shot clock for the Rebels. Ben Winter a three. That's off the back iron as Rory Winter collects. Here is Pullman driving. And the rebound there from Headley. And a foul has been called. That's centre court. In fact, it's an offensive foul. So Essex will get the ball back with 50.9 seconds remaining in the first. Looked like maybe a carry, John, there. As I'm not sure if it was an offensive foul or a carry, but either way, Essex will get the ball back. But 14 each probably would have predicted this Ooh. kind of competition. Martin. And Winter couldn't hang on to it. And Loughborough will get the ball back. A broken offense there from the Rebels. Game is deadlocked at 14. And basically, we got, we got both benches out here at the moment. Both coaches going quite deep mm. into their personnel early on and giving everyone a chance to play. Coaches generally do that in big games and then let it pan out and see who's got it going, going down the stretch. Keita, under the basket, the floating hook shot, no good. Again, Loughborough get the offensive rebound. And shot clock at eight. Three-pointer is off, way off, by Edward Onya. Martin, step back three, money. And for anyone else, really, that's a bad shot. But Kyron Martin can make that with ease. It's a practice jumper, really, as Essex nearly come up with the steal. <laughs> but a tough shot there by Kyron Martin, making it look easy. And that ends the first quarter here at Loughborough University. And the Essex Rebels take a narrow 17 to 14 lead after the first 10. Both teams, though, really hanging around from each other. Biggest lead for either team has been five points. It's everything you really need in a big game, isn't it? You know, both teams really going at it. There's been some mistakes, some missed shots that normally those players would make. And as you, you know, mentioned, towards the end of the first quarter, both coaches emptying their benches, just seeing where the land lies a bit. 17 yeah, it's to good, 14 it also is a reflection on the confidence of the coaches the and the players, 10, because teams, though, five really games left in the regular season, a lot of the coaches the team will team trim that points. line up down to eight, really they'll go need you know, not game, necessarily it, into the both nines and tens, really but at it. been you're some looking mistakes, at players getting, getting time to play and a chance to play, and I suppose that's what's good about this league, John. You know, there's a lot of young players, English players coming through that are, are very, very talented. So, so yeah, you're right. Coach is going deep into the bench early on. 
Justin Headley leading the way the for the Loughborough Riders with six points. He's the only player that's played all ten minutes. Horman and thus far three point for the Riders. The same goes off for the Trey Chapman, but he has Rilax six points three in answers only at the other eight end. on the court. Both teams, though, shooting the ball for a first ten minutes quite poorly. But that's as to be expected, as we just mentioned. You know, Loughborough shooting 30% from the floor, Essex 36% from the floor. As we get the second quarter started, and Essex will start us off. Yeah, the, the advantage that Loughborough have early on with Hayden and Cater is that they are slightly bigger, I would say, back to the basket players, and we see Gamble coming in now. You know, that they are bigger players than what Essex have, and they've had looks, John. They've just not got them to fall. So, you know, it's an advantage. They're only three points down, so I think the happier of the two teams right now will be the Riders. Still three quarters left to play as Elias Poorman gets the second period underway. As the two winters, the two brothers connect here. Here is Ben Winter. And here is Pullman back again. Martin. And that pass was intended for Ben Winter, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be a Loughborough ball first possession. Bit of a broken offence there from Essex. Yeah, but great coaching to let Loughborough go back into that zone. Uh, so tough. Younger players really, really struggle against the zone because you have to be able to pass to see seams. You have to sometimes skip players and make those real good reads. And young players not always accustomed to playing at that sort of zone. A good strategy by Loughborough. Belak stolen away, and here comes Martin for the Riders. The extra pass to Ben Winter, and a foul has been called. Foul looks like it's on the floor. He didn't yeah. go up with the basketball, and should have just flung that one up anyhow with the left, but an opportunity missed there by Essex to get out and score. Anos Karas will now take a seat. Both coaches rotating their bench heavily in the first two quarters as Rory Winter has it. Here's Martin, a very deep three, rattles one in. Wow, and he's sharp like barbed wire. Those two shots he's made it didn't even look like, it looked like free throws, John. <laughs> Headley is fouled, driving to the hoop. That's Rory Winter's first foul. Just getting started here at Loughborough University on the Basketball England YouTube channel. Bailey. Bailey gets it back, puts up a three and hits. How efficient has he been, John? You mentioned, I think, six points in eight minutes and he's just splashed that one. Really sharp play by Bailey. Inside to Poorman. Poorman, nice pass inside and the finish by Hudson. Tyrese Hudson into the game with his first score. Yeah, and always, ni always nice to get an easy one, John. Elias Bilek. Bilek. And Bilek will finish at the other end. Elias Poorman put that one on a plate for him and a nice response by Loughborough with the three. Essex lead by two as Poorman drives. Poorman almost stumbles, loses the ball, and Loughborough will get the ball back as Elias Poorman just a bit too quick for his own good. Yeah, good no call by the referees. Definitely no contact there. Elias Poorman just ran out of ground space and ended up going to the floor. He wants the foul, but nothing doing for me there. The correct no call. As Headley checks out, Gordon checks in. Elijah Bailey leading the team this season with 20 points a game. Studying international business here at Loughborough University. Again, he nearly stumbles and he turns it over as well. Here is Ben Winter. The extra pass, Martin. Rory Winter for three, that's long. Ben Winter with the rebound. Good passing here from the Essex Rebels and a foul has been called. So Elias Poorman will go to the foul line. He's been in the thick of the action, Elias Poorman. Is, 
You see the replay, he draws the contact, smart play by the young man. But going back, Kyra Martin really probably thinking I should have shot that ball. He's two for two, unselfish play, skips it to Winter in the corner, but if you're hot, you're hot. You shoot that basketball, young fella. Elias Poorman, 61% foul shooter for the season, misses the second, and away comes Bailey for the Riders. Biggest lead of the game for either team has been five points and had quite a few turnovers thus far as well. That is Loughborough's sixth turnover already. And the turnovers you don't like, there's no pressure on the ball, they're unforced. It's just the careless passes, he didn't get the right angle, he didn't get to the wing to deliver that ball into the block. A poor pass by Bailey, but probably the only thing he's done wrong so far. Here is Poorman. Poorman driving to the hoop. Winter, nice pass Beautiful inside. Pass. And the finish from Hudson. Beautiful pass. Saw the defense turn in the head and he read that one like a book. Second field nice goal. Pass. Second field goal for Tyrese Hudson. Here is Bailey, the floater along the baseline. No good. The tip in is good from Harrison Gamble. Loughborough having the habit of just hanging around, John, not really playing great, but still keeping it to a three-point ball game. Harrison Gamble, who had 14 points last time these two teams met in December, wins to the out, passes. Offensive foul has been called. Bit of a broken offense again from Essex as Winter trying to recreate what he did earlier, but to no success on that time, and he will check out, and Luke Bazumbru will check in. Plays like that are momentous, really. You know, it looks like Essex are making some shots and having their way, and I just said three points is nothing. And Loughborough just percolating, really not yet got it going. And still well in the right as he Absolutely as the, make that a one-point game. Nice play. Headley with the finish off the feed from Gamble. Here is Bazumbru for the Rebels. Bazumbru, the floater, just about goes. <laughs> And Luke Bazumbru with five points for the Rebels. Here is Headley at the foul line. And Bazumbru with the rebound. And away come the Rebels again. The extra pass and floater is no good from Hudson. Pace is now quicking up a little bit here as Milo Gordon drives. Goes glass too strong. He wants a foul. The coach is probably over there thinking, let's get a timeout. <laughs> We've just seen a couple of minutes of absolutely helter-skelter, chaotic basketball. Poorman driving. Bazumbru, extra pass. Martin, a three is good. And a timeout has been called right on cue as Will Maynard wants to talk it over with his guys. Game is tied. At 27, 529 remaining in the second quarter. And what a you know what a sequence this has been. The last few minutes has been absolutely, as you mentioned, very fast paced. Nothing like we saw in the first quarter. The pace just quickening up a bit. Yeah, I think the table just added the score onto the wrong side. So we do have a six-point oh, yeah. ball Part game. Uh, you were right, though, Johnny. It did say, it did say 27 <laughs> feet. Uh, but, <laughs> on you know, and kicks I would say... Horman, an underrated Loughborough three have had a little bit of a run. They've come stats, back, they've punched back, which the is bench. encouraging. But Cairo well, Martin is three for three. three. That man is absolutely end. rolling. That shot in the corner didn't look like it was even going to miss. And good recognition by Winter to skip that one across to him. deep three. Already starting to be a really nice ball game. to get an easy one, John Elias. 5.29 remaining and we can confirm as well that uh, it is Essex up 30 to 24, their biggest lead of the game well, thus the far. Right, Absolutely. As I the think within the next five game. minutes, That's John, good. as a coach for Loughborough, what you want to do is go into halftime, keeping it within five. Uh, for Essex, they'll want to get some breathing space. Loughborough being the home team, third quarter will be ever important to come out and really establish what they can do at home, but you know, Essex will want to extend this one to 10 or 12 going into the half. Big five minutes coming up. 
Here is Headley for the Riders. Gordon. Looking for Naduka inside. Headley has it anyway. Bailey looking for the catch and shoot. Instead kicks it out. Gamble. Nice pass. Good idea. Bailey just about collects and finishes. Yeah, nice play really by Harrison Gamble. The pass was a little bit off. But the execution, the up fake, was absolutely sensational. Absolutely. Kind of missed the pass, didn't he, did Bailey? Yeah. But did well to collect it at the second attempt and finished inside. Here is Trey Chapman. Now to Ollering. Inside to Chapman. Inside. Muscles his way, but Gamble tips it off. And away comes the Riders, looking to narrow the gap to a one-possession game. Bailey. Dancing. Going inside. Blocked, but too much contact by Chapman and that'll be a foul on Trey Chapman and two free throws incoming for Elijah Bailey who is an 80% free throw shooter for the season. And as you see the replay, he has that ball on a string but Chapman a tough ask to stay in front but once again, you have to back up. I would, I would make Bailey beat you from three regularly. He can do it, yes, but he can also get to the hoop and cause havoc and what you don't want to do is see Elijah Bailey stood in the line like you say, Absolutely. shooting 80%. On the uh, three-point side, he's a shade under 35% this season. 44% last season, if you really must know. But um, We always must know. We John. always oh, must oh. know. <laughs> away from knowledge. Away from basketball, studying international business here in Loughborough and has made the East Midlands his home. Now in his second season, has presumably really travelled with it. Instead now kicks it out to Hudson. Bazumbru gets it back. Nice pass. And wow. three-pointer is short from Kyron Martin. Just shows that he's human, John. That was the most open one he's had all game. As Keita will now go to the foul line. Bit of afters as well with Bazumbru who's holding his face. As Sam Keita will go to the foul line and you talk about physicality, Sam Keeter obviously will know that from his time last season with the Plymouth City Patriots in the British Basketball League. Of course, that's a league that is getting very physical now, very, uh, you know, obviously a professional league and a lot of physicality there. And Sam Keeter using that to you know, muscle his way inside, go to the foul line. He's just not seemed to get it done offensively. You know, we've just seen him miss the free throw and miss a few easy ones. But what I do like about him is the effort and the way he runs the floor. For his size, he gets down the court early. You know, he usually beats the defense down there, which gives him an opportunity. However, comes up short two for and two. And Bazumbru wow. driving to the hoop and scores. Luke Bazumbru. That's how he likes to play his basketball, fast paced and to the rack. Yeah, and how many times do you see him score? Would you like some tea with that roll? As he goes to the right hand, beautiful play by the Sunbrew. Headley inside to Keita, and Keita, that's too easy, but he misses another one under the basket, and away comes the Zumbru again. Essex passing the ball well, and Winter with a three. Wow, and a five-point swing there. Sam Keita has the easiest of bunnies to that try and actually... make that one in. Wow. That was actually Connor Nelson, excuse me, with the three-pointer. And Loughborough now trail 35-28, and that'll be an offensive foul on Victor Naduku. Essex starting to flex their muscles here a little bit, leading by seven with 3.16 remaining. They have, and you can talk about strategy and you can talk about different plays, but you have to be able to put the ball in the hoop. You know, Cater is a foot out and Essex are executing and making long ball shots, so that's the difference right now, John. Loughborough going back to zone. Ollering driving the hoop, loses the ball, and away come Loughborough, two on two. Bailey, good defense, or maybe not, as the referee has called the foul, and that'll be two shots as Elijah Bailey exploded to the hoop. Really? I think a technical warning has been called as well. Or has it? No, it is a technical foul. It's a poor play as well, uh, mentally, really, by Essex as they're on a roll. And the last thing they need is to shift that momentum. But what a play by Elijah Bailey, Bailey getting to the hoop. Really smart to draw the contact. 
and allow himself to get to the foul line. Every good scorer knows how to do that. But going back to the technical, John, you know, they have the ball. They go in the other way after this. Don't say anything. It's not the right time. Maybe you've got the right thing to say, but it's not the right time. So, you know, ill-advised play from Essex there, picking up the tee. And that'll be three free throws. Bailey makes the technical foul shot, and now his two shots at the line as he makes the first. And it's good for Loughborough to get these opportunities at the foul line. They were trailing by seven now. They've trimmed it to five. Chance to make it a four-point game, which they do. So a good trip there for the Riders with 2.50 remaining in the half. Here is Bazumbu to Olleren. Again, a three is up from Nelson. And away comes Loughborough. Naduku, beautiful footwork and the finish. Wasn't it just? Drifted right and came back left. Nice finish by the number 21 for Loughborough. Bazumbru driving. Oller in a three, straight away, and he connects. Very early in the shot clock, but Victor Ollerin, who had 32 points last time these two teams met, five for 12 from downtown, gets his first three-pointer of this game as Keita goes inside, loses the ball, and away comes Bazumru. And you can count this one as those two get Ollerin out of puts it in. as well as anybody else, John. And a timeout has been called by Coach Maynard. As, as you mentioned, it was two on one. Victor Ollerin made no mistake. Four quick points for him and for Essex. And they lead, their lead is back up to seven again. And Essex, the reason they're sitting second, John, is they know just when to turn the screw. They've had a couple of shots that they've gone down. The one in the corner by Ollerin. Loughborough have missed at the other end. And then they get out in the passing lanes and they get out running. And when number zero and number one are coming at you, it's double trouble because Absolutely. they're going down yeah, all, all, all the nice time. And that's why they're in second place in this division. A combined 12 points in this game for Bazumbru and Ollerin thus far. Ollerin, as mentioned, 32 points exploded absolutely as the Loughborough Riders when they left the Essex Sports Arena. That was a game that Essex won 85 to 75. They had 14 points in that game in transition. They've got four points so far here today, and you saw two of them in probably the most lightning play that Essex will have in this game. Yeah, I think I think now it moves Loughborough on to seven turnovers, so they can be yeah. costly. But we're not just talking about turnovers, we're talking about missed shots at the bucket. There's a premium not only scoring, there's a premium not giving the opportunity of the other team to run it back right down your neck. And that's what's been happening. So well, Sam Keats has been doing quite a bit of that. He's missed yeah. quite a lot under the basket. He now goes to the bench. Keita is actually one for five from the field, zero for four from the free throw line as inside Headley misses a wild layup and away come Essex in transition again. A lot of joy inside as Ollerin will now head to the foul line. Smart play by Ollerin, really had nowhere to go and he probably knew that and his only option was try draw some contact and he did it well. But going back to, I love your honesty now, John, because early on you mentioned Keita as the very, very tough layup to make. And now you're being honest, you know, you really... <laughs> welcome back, John. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Ollerin misses, or oh, makes, excuse me, the first. I nearly lied there as well. That's just horrible, that is. <laughs> Ollerin, who suited up for Thames Valley Cavaliers last season. Three seasons before that at the Nottingham Hoods. Now playing for the Rebels. So with 1.44 left, would you have predicted 33.42, John, to the visitors? Would you have gone with that? I think I'm it's gonna, a pretty I'm gonna good plead reflection. The, I'm going to plead the fifth and be uh, on the fence on that. Both teams go can compete. Both teams can beat the other. It was a very competitive game down in Essex back in December. So two quarters left to play with 90 seconds left of this second quarter. It's all to play for still. Bielak a three, that's off. And the rebound by Ekwe. Bazumbru. Ollerin. Back to Bazumbru. Ten on the shot clock. 
As Nelson misses the three, another offensive board though for the Rebels. Ekwe nearly crossed himself up there as uh, Loughborough get the ball back with a minute remaining in the half. Headley driving, no fear, goes inside, just about falls out and it'll be two shots and that was agonizing there <laughs> yeah. for Justin Headley who really wanted that to go. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth as you see the replay he does everything right, creates the contact and it's probably one of the easiest shots he's going to make. <laughs> And he just had that one rim out. Tough look. Justin Headley averaging 19 points, seven rebounds, five assists this season for the Riders. Studying biological science here at Loughborough University, one of the premier universities in the country, Loughborough. And still so hard to get through when you're a, a, a visitor, isn't it? <laughs> we is. both struggled. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. both struggled, didn't we, this morning getting here? <laughs> we did. So much going on here, though. Yeah, there mean, is a lot. I, yeah. I, I, I'd just like to add. Neither of us are on commission for Loughborough University. <laughs> <laughs> we just say now, you know how good a university it is as you as you rock up on campus. So much going on. There's a big football tournament going on uh, near the entrance. There's a three-pointer from Ollerin is off. As we enter the final 30 seconds here of the half. Headley almost loses the ball over two Essex players. Good defense there on the follow, though. And that's what Conroy, Conroy Hayden. Hayden. That's what Conroy Hayden does well. He's always been able to do that as we go down to last shot time. Shot clock first. is off, yeah. Shot clock Half. is off. So Bazumbru Essex will have the final shot. Bazumbru not really known for his three-point shooting, puts it up, and it's off to the left. And that'll end a Fairly entertaining first half, very physical, almost methodical pace to the first quarter, but my goodness me, did the pace quicken in at the second quarter. But the Rebels take a 42-37 lead heading into the half. Elijah Bailey, Justin Headley with 12 points and 10 points respectively for the Riders. And for the Essex, a bit more of a balanced scoring effort led by Kyron Martin off the bench. Three for four from the field. He has nine. Yeah, and it's been very good for the Essex team to, to come out here and try and move that basketball and get everyone involved. They've done just that. But I would say that Loughborough would be more than happy. They've missed countless layups. They've missed a lot of free throws, John, and it just seems like they've not got going yet. They're only five points down on their home court. So... I would, I would argue that Loughborough in the slightly better position because the way that Essex have shot the basketball has been quite impressive. So it's half time here at Loughborough University. It is the Loughborough Riders 37, Essex Rebels 42, and we'll be back in roughly 13 minutes time. Essex faring a little better, 44% as Justin Headley gets us underway. And here is Milo Gordon for the Riders. Bailey, Bailey for three from the wings in and out. And the rebound by Brazumbru. Surprising how wide open they left him though, John. Can definitely shoot from both. The foul line and the three-point line as they left him wide open. But and here he goes again for three. <laughs> Luke Bazumbri not known really for his three-point shooting, but you know, occasionally can hit them. Misses there. One player who can shoot is Victor Naduku, who kicks it out, and that'll be a travel as Conroy Hayden took too many steps and Essex will get the ball. Nice defense by Trey Chapman, but apart from that, it was a good start from Loughborough. It was early, good possession with an open jumper, and then they allowed Bazumbri to shoot the three, which you would hope they would do all day as a coach, because you don't want him doing this stuff, but they've contained him twice in a row now. Absolutely, and here comes the riders. Naduku driving at Chapman, goes inside, and he will go to the foul line as Trey Chapman protests his innocence. Yeah, didn't really have an attempt to block the shot, but definitely a foul as the contact was drawn and smart play by the offensive player. And that's a third foul as well on Trey Chapman as 
Victor Naduku will go to the foul line. A former EABL MVP with the uh, Charnwood College. Originally from Wigan in Lancashire, a former Manchester Magic product and now applying his trade with the Loughborough Riders as we enter the first minute of this third period. And Naduku misses the first. But that's a massive call. Three fouls on Trey yeah. Chapman because it basically gives the front court of the, of the Loughborough Riders the chance to now dominate and have some presence inside. Sam Cater, who not had his finest of halves, he'll be licking his lips at coming in off the bench and perhaps getting more easy shot opportunities going down with Trey Chapman out of the game. So and also, that will be interesting. And also a bit of uh, redemption as well. Not had the greatest of first halves, really wants to make it good in the second as Bazumba nearly travelled with it. Yeah. Some of the fans here in attendance thought he did and here he is with the ball. Loses his footing there and away come Loughborough again. That's another turnover for Bazumbru. Oh, and nice Bollerin now comes in with a steal and it's two on one. The alley -oop pass, and Oleron with the finish from the feed by Hudson. Yeah, nice defense by Victor Oleron as he gambles and, and wins, but yeah, Luke Basumbru. Bailey going inside, going glass, misses everything, and a foul has been called. Going back to Luke Basumbru, he's had the ball at the top of the key, and like Yanis to Kumpo has tried to drive it right down the seam, but Loughborough smartly are backing off and just letting him come and good strategy by, by the riders at the beginning to contain one of the better players in this league. For Zumbri, Ollerin, between them had great first half for the Essex Rebels. The short hook is no good from Tyrese Hudson. And away comes Elijah Bailey for the riders. Bailey thought about the three. Instead, it kicks it out to Headley, who has it back. Riders patient in offense right now and still a lot of time as Headley misses the free throw line jumper. And they get another bite of the cherry, do the riders. Naduku driving. And a foul has been called there on Connor Nelson, who did reach in, he thought he got all ball, but from where we were, that looked like a foul. It did, and I think a foul in any league, but I'm just watching the, the kind of level of play and the momentum here, John. And for me, Elijah Bailey has to get going. You know, 44-37, this could get out of hand with another couple of scores by Essex. But Elijah oh. Bailey is that guy that can create his own shot and create for others. He has to be in attack mode right now. Well, a guy who actually currently leads the uh, riders with 12 points but at the moment just three for nine from the field as you say really needs to get going in this third quarter and stamp his authority here he is on the ball driving to the hoop and that is perfect yeah make me look good Elijah Bailey as he does <laughs> just that but I don't care if he has 100 points right now he has to keep attacking and that got deflected it'll stay with the rebels with a lot of time on the shot clock and this is something we've seen from both teams throughout this game. Quick offenses and you know, not leaving a lot of time on the shot. Well, they've actually put a lot of time on it as Nelson kicks it outside and the finish just about goes from Bazumbo. And that was beautiful. He made Connor Hayden look like he was a statue as he kind of sneaked his squeakers, if you could say that, John. <laughs> on the hardwood. Duku had to really climb to get that and driving to the basket, kicks it out. The extra pass, Milo Gordon for three. That's long. And the rebound from Nelson and away come the Rebels in transition as Ollerin, who nearly lost the ball, missed the layup. And away comes the Riders. The Duku a three, splash. Big bucket. Loughborough are playing well. Defensively, they've come out with a good strategy. They've obviously talked about that in the locker room at halftime. And they've come out with a purpose here. They just need to keep ticking over and making some shots. And right there again, great defence by the Riders. Another turnover and away come the Riders again. The Duke another three. Puts it in again. Back-to-back -back threes. And all of a sudden, the gap is won. 
time out Essex. And you can see it coming as a basketball fan, as an enthusiast, as a player. I could see this one coming. You know, Loughborough have definitely come out with more purpose and it seems like Essex have not been able to get into that groove. They've had a number of players in the open court and not capitalise and it goes back to this, John. And the Duku with back-to-back -back triples. Now two for four from downtown but more importantly the riders have trimmed the gap to one it was a seven point game at one point they've trimmed it to one a great start to this third quarter from Loughborough yeah and they've just bounced back <laughs> we spoke about them staying close at half time and they did just that and the, you know the shot making was of the essence in the first half for uh, the Essex Le uh, the, I was going to say Essex Leopards. Oh, <laughs> the Essex Very Rebels. Three. Beg your pardon. Uh, but they've just come out and made nice, shot after nice shot to get an easy and one. John Elias Bye, pull and, you know, couple that with the great defence and how they've played. They deserve to be back in this one. And yeah, really good to see them only down one. Somewhere in Essex, Dave Ryan is thanking you. Well, with the right. Absolutely, is <laughs> Make that a one point game. Nice 17 work. remaining. That, that was a formidable team, the it Essex was. Leopards. Back I in mean, the day, it was. It, we, we could say this is the rebirth of, of Essex because they're back up there now. You know, well, the Essex Rebels are firmly their own team. There's no yes. doubt about that. Here is Bazumbru for the Rebels now driving to the hoop. The extra pass. Nelson a three and a foul. A potential four-point play, and what a response, Connor Nelson. But just as you get going, Joe Bielek commits a foul in the am one four-point play. It's, you know, the only play in basketball that you cannot make. You cannot foul a three-point shoot and give up a four-point play, especially when you have momentum. Poor play there uh, by Joe Bielek. Second three-pointer for Connor Nelson of this game from the corner. And just like that, the Rebels have a five-point lead. So a great answer out of the timeout. Headley looking to respond from the foul line. And no good. And another rebound this time by Nelson again. And here come the Rebels. Bazumru, the floater. And the Duku with the loose ball. And away comes Justin Headley. Naduku puts in another three, three three-pointers for Victor Naduku. Wow, it's a big heat check as well by the number 21. We saw Kyron Martin do that in the first half for Essex. Naduko's come out and said, anything you can do, I can do just the same. Beautiful shooting by the number 21. Bazumbru off to the left. Sam Keita with the rebound. Bailey, Bailey a pull up, Jay Money. Game is tied at 50. Riders are rolling. Bazumbru. Right now it's 13 to 8 in favour of the Riders here in this third period. Three pointer is on the way from Ollerin. Here is Bailey. Bailey a step back jumper, and that's off as well. Now, I don't mind that shot, John. He's the guy that has to keep attacking. You know, you, you allow him two or three of those in the game, but a nice extra, pass by Essex. Absolutely, extra pass. Nelson misses the shot under the basket. A bit more of a difficult attempt, and on the follow was Hudson. You gotta love the second effort by both those two, and Tyrese Hudson, limited minutes last season. He's taken advantage of everything he's got this year, John. He's like a spark plug. Right for this now, Essex team. Right now, the Rebels hanging on to the lead, but just like that, Naduku, the man of the moment, ties the game up again at 52. But anything Loughborough can do right now, Essex do have an answer for. Ollerin inside, Bailey marking, blocked by Sam Keaton. His body's on the floor. And a foul has been called. And we were critical of Sam Keaton in the first half, but you have to give him a lot of respect for how he's come out and played, and he just gets the block there. Great position by Keaton, but if you're not scoring, you have to do other things like that, and he's done that off the bench. And these first few minutes he's been given, so well done, Sam Keaton. Three forty remaining in the third period. Naduku 
inside to Keita. The extra oh, pass. pass. Be like a three. That's no good. That was great vision by Sam Keita to be able to find Be like the, the extra pass shot. to Ekwe. That's a three. No coincidence that Kyron Martin into the game means the floor is spread a little bit more, John, and that was the result. An open three for Ekwe in the corner. But once again, Loughborough, who come back into the game, Essex straight away answer and get their noses in front. Bielak driving. That's good. No, it's an offensive foul. Good positioning there from Elias Poorman. And a vital offensive foul. We're seeing what it means to both teams. We've seen Sam Keita come in and, you know, give it all defensively and pass the ball very well. And then Elias Pullman off the bench comes in, really plays with a lot of energy. So really, really good game here, John. Here is Bazumbri. 2.48 remaining, Ekwe. Putting the moves on the Doku. Ekwe, a three is no good. Headley rebounds. Lots to play for in this game as Headley goes strong with his floater. No good. Bazumbru, another rebound for him. Bazumbru, the extra pass. Poorman inside, misses the layup. Keita rebounds. Still three point game. Gordon, and Headley gets it back. Eight to shoot for the Riders, Keita. Putting the moves on Bazumbru, Keita the extra pass, three pointer, Seth Wiley misses everything. Just didn't look like he was ready to shoot the ball, it was a nice pass by Sam Keita. He just didn't look like he was ready, but a <laughs> nice tip by Kyron Martin. Absolutely, as Kyron Martin again hits. He's four for five now, yeah, John. Yeah, shooting the ball exceptionally well. Another tip in for him as well as Gordon has it. Keita in unfamiliar territory with nine on the shot clock. Yeah. Keita now goes to his favorite spot. Good defense from Ekwe, standing his ground. They've got to put up something, Loughborough. And good defense from the Rebels. And here comes Bazumbru. Bazumbru driving down Main Street, and it'll be two foul shots for Luke Bazumbru. It's a crazy game, John, because as well as Loughborough have played, that last possession was absolutely awful. Didn't look like they were going anywhere. And it will be a welcome that there's only 120 left in this third quarter. And it's still a five-point game, so crazy game, really. Abuka Ekwe checks out, and Ben Winter checks in. And it's everything you want in a game, isn't it? It's been very chippy, very scrappy for the majority of this game. It's pretty much what you see you know, in a game where there's so much at stake. Obviously, the Essex Rebels, six and one on the road. They need to win this game as the Derby Trailblazers, who obviously will be competing a bit later on in the Kick King Trophy final, will be watching this game with great interest. Yeah, and Essex right now will be kind of hoping that they get a little bit of more of a lead and holding on, but you can you can imagine how Coach Maynard has to coach. He's always got a younger team because Loughborough, you know, through the through the university program, and they always kind of are the feeder team for the for the Leicester Riders. So, you know, they've always got younger players. So you can see why they're up and down, John. Keita putting the moves on Winter. Keita sets his feet, misses the floater inside. He goes to the floor, and a foul has been called, and that's. I think is on, it's on Elias Pullman actually. Almost thought it was on Ben Winter, but uh, Elias Pullman with the foul. Essex lead 59-52. 7-0 run here right now for the Rebels as Gordon has it. Bailey a three, puts it in. Elijah Bailey from downtown. A man who really needs to stamp his authority now as this game heads to the crucial fourth period, as Poorman has it. We've just, we've just seen this game go up a couple of notches, John. Haven't we just? As, as Martin goes, goes to inside the bucket and a foul. And one. 
Nice play by Kyron Martin, but we've just seen it go up a couple of notches and now you see Elijah Bailey attacking and Kyron Martin back into the ball game and how good's he been? Absolutely. And how, how efficient has he been? 82% foul shooter as well, Kyron Martin, who had 19 points on five for 10 shooting last week against the Nottingham Hoods. That was a 102-87 win for the Rebels who kept the momentum going and definitely buoyed by the fact that the uh, Trailblazers lost uh, against the Hemel Storm that same night. But they need to keep the pressure on. They need to win this game here today. And for the Loughborough Riders, it's all about playoff positioning right now, currently in sixth spot. Bailey a three. Bailey again, back-to-back -back threes for Elijah Bailey. Shot clock is off. It's a four-point game heading into the fourth period as Martin puts on the Jets and then puts the brakes on. Here is Poorman, final seconds of the third. Poorman, the extra pass, a three-pointer is no good by Ricardo Massafra into the game for the first time. And that ends an entertaining third period. And it's all to play for, Jason. Four-point game. It is, and Elijah Bailey has done just what I asked. He's put his foot down and he's tried to attack every single opportunity. However, we can always judge a player by how well he's playing, when he's playing poorly, and Sam Cater has come in and played very, very well when he's not had it going during the first half. But the spark for me has been Kyron Martin. He's been absolutely sensational, and that last play amplified his intelligence on the basketball court. Could have laid it up and threw it back out, and it allowed Essex to get the last open three. He's a smart basketball player absolutely. with phenomenal skills. And for Kyron Martin, 14 points leading the way for the Rebels. Bazumbru has 11 to add on four for 11 shooting. For Kyron Martin, five for six from the field. You, you alluded to it earlier, you only missed one shot in this game and he's kept that going. Yeah, and his skill set and his efficiency says that he can make tough shots. However, they're all good shots for him. He's not forced anything. He's just made shots that he can make and he's played under control. And he's also chipped in at the defensive end, but he, him for me, he's been the standout for the Essex team. And for the riders, Elijah Bailey with nine points in the th third quarter. He has 22 to lead all scorers. Victor Naduku has 14 on five for seven shooting. Three three-pointers made all in the third period. Yeah, and it swung the momentum, John. Basketball is a game of runs, and it swung that back in favour of Loughborough, but Elijah Bailey, cometh the hour, cometh the man. He's just taken over at some point. Well, a what nice a move. move from Poorman. The spin and the finish to start the fourth. And again, the momentum was with Loughborough heading into the fourth period, but Essex answer right back and a foul has been called away from the ball the good news for us commentating on the game john it's never been really out of reach for either team you know six points we're looking at right now is easy the way Najuku yeah. and leicester have been shooting sorry loughborough have been shooting the basketball it's easy reachable as elijah bailey will go to the foul line well we haven't had a double digits lead in this game it just shows how close and how competitive this encounter has been, biggest lead for either team has been nine points. Essex have had that lead as Elijah Bailey, an 80% foul shooter going to the line, strings the first. Well, actually a technical foul shot, actually. That's something we, we missed. That's unfortunate as <laughs> Loughborough keep the ball and five second violation. Good defense there from the uh, Essex Rebels. I mean, you just couldn't make it up really, John. No, you can't. <laughs> Leicester really, with the foot on the gas coming back into contention and then they have a five, five second out of bounds play. This game really has had everything, it has. hasn't it? It's uh, been scrappy, it's been, you know, there's had some bright spots, it's been fast paced, there's been some uh, tough calls to make as Poorman Risky pass, but finds no one but Harrison Gamble. And here is Headley driving to the hoop and misses the layup too strong. That's another thing we've seen. Both teams have missed so many layups that they would have made in their sleep as Poorman has it. Here is Martin. 
And look how smart Martin is, you know. He knows he's got a mismatch in gamble, really, if he moves without the ball. Pullman, a pull-up jumper, money. Nice shot by Elias Pullman. Elias Pullman, former Solent Kestrel, first season with the Essex Rebels, really showcasing his talent, especially over the last two seasons. As Gamble just about has it, six on the shot clock, Bailey's got to dance. Nice pass inside, the Dooku with the finish, but a f whistle has gone. And it's a foul. Loughborough exceptionally lucky there. Absolutely, Elijah Bailey yeah. tiptoeing the, the end line with nowhere to go and kind of bailed out with a moving call. Could have gone either way, so lucky break, break for Loughborough. Let's see if they can take advantage and not get another five-second call here. 8.32 remaining, a lot of time in the fourth. Bailey, Naduku, Gordon looking for options. Gordon instead drives on the spin, misses the layup. And he wanted a foul as Kyron Martin slapped down on his hand by the looks of it. Nelson. Oh, excuse me, that's Winter. Winter going to the hoop, off the glass again, no good. Both teams really struggling under the hoop here as Headley drives down Main Street. And Gordon misses the ball and Essex get the ball. You Very just, scrappy sequence. You just can't make it up. It just looks like they have a layup, they miss one, they, they get one, they make a tough shot. Essex do the same, they turn the ball over. For the neutral watching, what a game, John, for the coaches. Absolutely agonising well, at times. I was going to say, for both coaches, this uh, is pr probably a nightmare for them. However, the most important statistic is the uh, scoreline you see. It's 66-59. And another technical and was yeah, called as well. Be between the mayhem, just throw in a few technicals as well, John, just That's to keep it interesting. And we got Kyra Martin missing a foul shot. That's the fourth technical foul we've had in this game as well, just to put it into perspective yeah certainly a game that's been as chaotic as you like really as Bazumbru now has it Bazumbru now driving to the hoop winter winter finds some daylight but he is fouled and now the game starts it's starting to be a bit you know stop start at the moment yeah and this is when you need your big players to come through like Gamble has had a lot of experience playing for this Loughborough Riders team also, Bailey, there's another guy can get it done, and on the opposing end, the guy with the ball in his hands, Basumbru, yeah. has to find a way to get going, whether it's in the open court or mid-range. Poorman inside, Poorman with the finish! Great degree of difficulty, Elias Poorman. And Essex have now tied their biggest lead of the game. It's now nine points. Loughborough now need to answer. They already weathered the storm the first time. Blocked as Bailey was going for the three. Bailey has it back again, and an offensive foul has been called. Great defense there, first from Kyron Martin, and then I think it was from Elias Pullman who got his body in the way. It was, and Bailey's, yeah. Bailey's been tough to guard, so Essex guarding him by committee, as you said. Martin with the initial block, and then Pullman comes across and stands and takes the charge. So. Great team defense by Essex. And that's Bailey's fourth foul as well. So Elijah Bailey will take a seat. That's a huge foul. And one that Essex Rebels will really aim to capitalize as they look to complete the season double over the Loughborough Riders as we have our moisture check technician coming in for the first time today. Well, we say we've John, seen everything. We've John, not seen I, them I, yet. John, I love that. <laughs> I, love th I love that the floor wiper has now become the moisture technician. When did that happen? Do you know what? I have no idea. What? It wasn't me who started it. It, 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 it has honestly, to be you, John. I will it has be to very be honest. The, it wasn't I've me. I've never, ever heard of a moisture technician. I've heard a few commentators <laughs> say it in their time. <laughs> have you? I have. I, I think. I think. You know what? I think the great Niall Gray might have started that. Either way, Poorman is fouled on the floor, and again another foul has been called as both teams now go to or near team fouls. That's the fourth team foul for the Riders. Essex on three. 
Here is Bazumbru getting it off Rory Winter. Bazumbru puts it in. That's a two-pointer. He stepped on the line. And this is the biggest lead of the game for the Rebels. Forget the scouting report, John, on both teams. These teams are just doing totally the opposite of what you predicted. If you were to allow Luke Bazumbru to shoot wide open threes, you would take that all day. And he just says, OK, I'm going to go against the script like everything else in this game and throws one in on a well-needed big-time shot, really, to put them up 11 points. And the Duku now a chance to narrow the gap back to single figures. And going back to Bazumbru, a player who you know, has you know, shot a few three-pointers in his time. He's actually a career 33% three-point shooter. He just doesn't take enough of them. Yeah. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's picky poison Absolutely, because he's that yeah. good. He's that good offensively. However, what you don't want to do is see him coming at you because he's a freight train. But you know, if he's able to shoot the three, it's game over as well. And this guy's able to shoot the three. That's well, for sure. Well, he was, yeah. But Martin missed that three-pointer. But a nice step back to create some space. Ball goes out of bounds and. Loughborough will get the ball back, down 10, 6.31 remaining. A lot of time still in this game. And Loughborough have come back from a nine-point deficit in the space of two and a half minutes, so it is doable for them. They have the, the talent to get to, to where they need to be. Bilak misses Naduku and finds no one but Elias Porman. Here is Porman on the ball. Rory Winter will slow it down. Bazumbru. Still lot, backing up on Bazumbru. And a lot of time still on the shot clock for the Rebels. Inside it goes Martin. Got caught in two minds there and missed everything with his layup attempt. Naduku. Gordon. Headley. Putting the moves on Bazumbru. But there's 10 on the shot clock for Justin Headley. Inside it goes to Naduku. And Rory Winter stands his ground and the whistle has gone. So Loughborough come up with a break, but Justin Headley has a wide open look after two or three passes on the right wing. You have to let that one fly. He's a good outside shooter and can put pressure on the defence and that would have cut that seven and a little bit more of a momentum swing. So for me, he is at the foul line, but had a wide open three and he has to take those down this last five minutes and change. Absolutely, but at the same time as well, getting you know, your points from the foul line, provided obviously Headley makes these, is still you know, better than nothing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're right, John. It stops the clock and, you know, as, as we jinx him again, it does stop the clock and he, he's able to get to the line, but, you know, a three ball, so momentum shifting. Loughborough now 10 of 19 from the foul line wow. in this game. Make that 11 for 20. They were seven for 17 for 24 when these two teams last met. Poorman backing down Headley. Winter spinning on the Duke. Good play as he kicks it out to Rory Winter as the shot clock was winding down. Good defense, patient defense from the Riders. Exactly what coach Will Maynard would like. And at the other end, off the back iron, a three-pointer is no good from Bailak. And here comes Bazumbru. Oh, Bazumbru nice to Poorman. Beautiful basketball. Good link-up play from Bazumbru. And the finish from Poorman. Timeout called Will Maynard. And it's an 11-point lead back to double digits again for the, the Essex Rebels. So one of the concerns for me if you were an Essex Rebel was that Trey Chapman had to go on three fouls. That seems like an eternity ago, but what a luxury it is that Luke Basumbru yeah. can get a rebound at one end and kind of play big and then handle the ball and play small at the other end, delivering the beautiful dime right on time for Elias Poorman. So Luke Basumbru, what a luxury to have on your team. Absolutely, but on the flip side, you've got Elijah Bailey, the, the key man for the Riders, on four fouls. Yeah. And right now... You've, you know, you've got there is some help there, but it, does it just seem that it's not enough right now? Well, I often wonder because it, at that point, it was about a six-point ball game, John. And, and do you leave him in? Do you just say, let's roll the dice? It's now or never. You know, it's, it's very tough as a coach to make that decision. You've got your best player on four fouls. Should he just play it out? I guess you've got to know how he plays and with what smarts. But 
you know, it looks like he's slightly backfired, you know, taking him out. But here he is back in the ball game. So let's see if he can play and not foul out. Let's see, yeah. 4.56 left in this game. So a lot of time. But Elijah Bailey, who stepped up in the third period, had nine points, but committed his fourth foul within the first minute of this quarter. Now back in and on the ball for the Riders. Headley loses his footing and gets fouled. Looked to use a bit of English there on that layup, but this has been a sort of game where it's been very stop-start. Both teams missing a lot of plays under the basket and now it almost seems like we're getting a lot of free throws in the final quarter. It does. Refs have definitely tightened up on that contact, but that one, Victor Olerin didn't really have any option. He was trying to get out of the way and he was just kind of touch foul called. So Headley once again at the line. Headley makes both foul shots. Headley a 75% free throw shooter for the season. Bazumbru loses the ball, gets it back, and is short with his shot under the basket. As both teams struggle from close range. Headley, Bailey screaming for it and gets it. Bailey, quick release three, that's short. Didn't really have his feet set as he got the ball released and here come the Rebels, and a whistle has gone. Wow, it's another, another technical. Another technical has been called. And Coach Will Maynard this time with the uh, technical foul. So that's five technicals we've had in this game. And, you know, both teams really need to be careful. You don't want any disqualifications coming out of this. Especially with the game, even though the you know, Rebels have a 10-point lead now, there's still a lot of time and the Riders can get back into this. So he must have said something, you know, that yeah. really crossed the line because you would like to think at this point in the game he will be emotional and you have to understand that. You know, you, you don't like to see technicals blown late on in games. Headley. Riders need to get some points on the board. Have to shoot that ball. Bailey, Naduku going inside, loses the ball, gets it back again. And it's a wild offense. And it'll be Essex ball. Good defense, but offense seemed a bit muddled there. There was no communication. Muddled or not, Naduku has shot the ball exceptionally well mm. in this second half. You have more than an inch of daylight. You have to let that one fly, young fella. Something, something you used to do in your days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's probably why I'm saying it. Uh, but, you know, a huge difference in 10 down and 7 down, John. And he had a chance yeah. to then cut that one. Poorman, a pull-up jumper. Both teams really struggling from the field at the moment. Here is Bailey. And again, the ball goes out of bounds. Another turnover. That is turnover number 17 for the Riders. That's... 29 in total in this game. Bazumbru for three. Puts it in! Luke Bazumbru from downtown <laughs> proving us wrong. Yep. Great shot. If they're going to leave him that open, Johnny has to take it. And that's the last two he's made. Absolutely. As inside, Bylet goes inside, misses the two under the basket. Headley from the foul line, no good. Ball batted around and it'll go out of bounds. Essex will get the ball. And going back to Bazumbru, before COVID, not really known for his three-point shooting, but when we, you know, when the NBL season came back, we saw a great improvement in Bazumbru's shooting when uh, the games were played behind closed doors. Still traditionally not known for his three-point shooting, but still improving every day. Inside, that's a great pass from Bazumbru. And the finish from Connor Nelson, as it's the biggest lead of the game now for the Rebels. They're up 13. It is, and you go back to Luke Bazumbru, that's what he can do well. He can back his man in as we see the replay, and then deliver the pass with his trusted left hand right on time. However, you go back to the COVID analogy and saying 
he shot the ball better, you know, during that period. Yeah. Was that when it was the three meter rule, John? Did you have to lay off him? <laughs> well, Will, obviously the scouting report not read properly by the riders. We don't know. I don't know. We don't. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> speaking about COVID, I mean, we have a little time to, to just shoot the breeze here. Like, how, how insane was basketball then? You know, all of a sudden basketball stopped, then it came back, and then the NBA was behind closed doors, yeah. and then we got back to playing and commentating over here. It's just absolutely phenomenal. I think it would, in, in years to come, we'll be talking about that in history lessons. Absolutely. Well, uh, I'll never forget uh, the, the numerous trips to venues and commentating with just basically myself and a colour commentator yeah. with me. And without question, then after the game, the players are saying to me, we heard every word you said. <laughs> <laughs> so glad there's fans now. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon. Loughborough really needs some points on the board as a foul has been called. It's a blocking foul and it allows Gordon to go to the line and the clock stops. Not sure how good a three-point shooter at this point in terms of confidence Gordon is. But once again, had another look at an open three. Well, Loughborough's last points came from the foul line. Justin Headley connected on them. It's been more than two minutes since Loughborough registered a point. It if has. You, if you really want to go much further than that, Loughborough have actually not scored a field goal in this entire fourth quarter. It's all their points have actually come from the foul line. As Milo Gordon misses the first, 2.16 remaining in the fourth, makes the second. I mean, there's so many things that are just not going to get it done if you're trying to win a ball game, and one of those is no field goals in that amount of time. Also, 17 or possibly 18 turnovers now. And the missed layups. Essex. Just been an Achilles heel for Loughborough. But for Essex, still not playing at their best, but they're getting the job done as Nelson puts up a three and the rebound from Gordon as they look for their first field goal here of the fourth. Naduku doesn't get the three to fall. Headley. Guarded by three Essex players. Bazumbru says, give me that, as Olerin to Bazumbru. And Bazumbru will go to the foul line. And another technical foul has been called, this time on Joe Bilak. Referee's really keen on these technicals. And that's four fouls now on Joe Bilak as well. In fact, actually, that's his fifth. He's checked out of the game. As Dan Hadley will come in to the game for the first time. Panos Kalas also checking in. Coach Maynard now just clearing his bench. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the Loughborough riders, you can stick in a fork, you can stick a fork in them, John. I think they're done. But Essex, doesn't matter if you win ugly or good. A win right now at this stage of the season on the road against the team trying to get into the playoffs is all they would have wanted coming into this building. And the team that lead the NBL one table, Derby Trailblazers watching on and absolutely no doubt they will not be liking this scoreline at the moment as the Essex Rebels piling on the pressure on the Trailblazers right now. They'll both have the same records following tonight. However, Derby will maintain top spot as Derby hold the head-to-head -head over the Essex Rebels. Essex Rebels' only loss on the road this season has come at the hands of the Trailblazers. Will Derby get it done this year, John? Absolutely, they've, yeah. It's... They've been banging on the door for absolutely years, and Coach Matt Shaw, you know, they've had some great seasons where he's been coach of the year at some point. And just... Can they get over that final hurdle? I think it'll be tough. Hemel will push them all away, so will Essex. Well, this is another thing, but, uh, you know, Hemel have one more... They have four losses as compared to Essex and Derby's three defeats. 
However, Derby also hold the head-to-head -head over the Storm as well, as a foul is called at mid-court. Both Poorman and Gordon were fighting for it. But with 121 remaining, job done for Essex and for Derby. It's a case of it's your turn next. However, Derby have a Kick King Trophy final to contend with following on from this game. They do, and you wonder, I mean, going down to Hemel, Derby really had that game sewn up, and the Veron is a absolute miracle at the end to score. Absolutely, yeah. Like maybe a second remaining on the clock, and, you know, Taylor Johnson was Taylor Johnson in that game, but Derby had the game won, and you wonder, there's a little bit of a distraction with this final that's coming up next that's coming to play because they just didn't see it over the finish line in what would have been Absolutely, a, a yeah. commanding it could have been. First position for them at this stage. And then Hemel followed that up with a narrow win last week against the Reading Rockets. They won that game by three as Gordon backs it home. Off the glass, tough move from Milo Gordon. But as the time winds down, it's been a solid fourth quarter for the Essex Rebels. As another foul has been called. but it's been a good fourth quarter here from the Essex Rebels. It's been a tight first three quarters. However, a 19 to six fourth period has ballooned this lead to double figures as Loughborough Riders having to rely on the foul line for the majority of their fourth quarter points as Ollerin drives to the hoop and he misses the layup. But make no mistake, both teams really haven't played at their best, but Essex have got the job done here today as Panos Karas, the Welsh international, turns the ball over. And Poorman will slow it down and Bazumbru will slow it down now for the Rebels. There is about a five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock, but it's fairly academic really as Ollerin puts up a three and knocks it down. Icing on the cake for the Rebels, who will get the win here at Loughborough University and keep the pressure on at the top of NBL Division One. They have defeated the Loughborough Riders 84-66. And I suppose it's what you want, John. It's the Essex. Rebels keeping their foot firmly on the gas and second position is what they wanted when they came into this ball game. But it's just so disappointing for Loughborough. They just couldn't get it done offensively and a really, really scrappy game in the end. But, you know, Essex won't care. They'll be going home happy. Absolutely. Luke Bazumbru leading the way with 18 points, eight rebounds, seven assists on six for 17 shooting. Kyron Martin adding 15. He hit three triples in that scoring blitz. For the Loughborough Riders, leading all scorers was Elijah Bailey with 23 points. And Justin Headley, or excuse, me, excuse me, Victor Naduku with 15 points. Justin Headley with 13. However, it is the Essex Rebels who get the job done here and pile the pressure on at the top as both they and the Derby Trailblazers are tied at the top of the table. However, Derby hold the extra vital head-to-head. -head. From me, John Hobbs, my thanks to Jason Swain. Stay tuned to the Basketball England YouTube channel. As up next, it is the Bradford Dragons and the Derby Trailblazers in the 2024 Kick King Trophy Final. So long for now.